There's some pretty hilarious analysis of Bernie Sanders supporters. Plus, how is the media handling coverage of the airstrike in uh, on an Iranian general in Iraq? Joining us via Skype to discuss this and so much more is Katie Halper, host of The Katie Halper Show and co-host of Useful Idiots, a Rolling Stone podcast. Great to see you, lady. You too. Hey, Katie. Happy New yeah. Year. Um, we've got some some uh, crack Bernie Sanders analysis coming out of the uh, the folks who are invited on Morning Joe over there at MSNBC. Yeah. Um, this one was, was uh, Dr. Jason Johnson, who is someone I know from my time there. Nice guy, but with a very bizarre take on why people are supporting Bernie Sanders. Let's take a listen. But yeah, so it, here's the thing. The idea there was going to be a progressive battle between Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. It was never something to have much resonance with me because that presumes that Bernie Sanders supporters are supporting him primarily for policy purposes. And that's not really what's going on. A lot of his core base support like him because they see him as sort of a political and democratic savior type character. So he was always going to end up winning out any sort of policy argument because in the end of the day, people like they like Bernie and they're Bernie or bust kind of people. But I do think it's critical to remember this. We really are down to like you know, four people who have any chance. You've got Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders, Mayor Pete, and Elizabeth Warren. Now, here's what makes this extra funny, this idea that people don't support Bernie Sanders for policy reasons, which what other reasons would they have to support him? A year ago, the same pundit was predicting with great certainty that Bernie would be out by summer, that there just wasn't any juice left in his movement. And he'd spoken to Bernie's people, he even said, and he thought he would be out by summer. So there you go. Well, that's a, he's doing us a favor then, right? By, t by showing us his own track record. Thank God for small favors, like bold <laughs> predictions that are of course totally wrong. Yeah. I don't know what people think. I mean, in a way it's flattering. If I were Bernie Sanders, maybe I'd be flattered because the implication is that he has something really appealing and attractive about himself other than policy. Um, I don't know what it is. He does have, I mean, I like his, he has a cute little, like he's a cute uh, style. But I, I wonder if people are just projecting their own view of politics and politicians. Like maybe this is just how these people making that argument view politicians, that they don't pay attention to policy. Because I don't really understand what would be driving people's um, appreciation of Sanders if not policy. I mean, that's his whole shtick, right, is that he repeats his policy positions again and again, uh, which is what people love about him. Uh, and then I think maybe, I mean, he has an honesty, authenticity demeanor because he actually is those things. But again, that, that's grounded in the way he, he fights for his right. ideas and fights for things. It doesn't make any sense, except for the projection. That's all I can all I can think of. Projection, or they're so desperate to make an anti-Sanders argument that they just have to be creative. To me, Katie, <laughs> what it shows is actually the emptiness of their own ideology, which is that they are actually right. so empty that they do support people based purely on aesthetics or upon right. like box checking that they couldn't conceive of other people supporting somebody right. for policy reasons. I actually exactly. see this all the time. It's like, oh, well, there's, you know, it's just that they're racist, so they happen to support somebody. It's like, no, well, you know, some people, sure. Right, right, but right. like, you know, yeah. other people are like, hey, I lost my job over here, and I just want to vote right. for somebody who wants to get me my job back. There is an implicit policy choice. It's just that all the policy choices that they would vote on also happen to align with their kind of aesthetic ide identitarian right. ideology. Right. Right. Which doesn't mean, of course, I mean, you know this, but just so viewers yeah. know, we don't mean like that they find someone physically attractive. They mean right. you, you're talking about the aesthetics as in what they symbolize and the style right. and the, the class stuff, which no one ever wants to talk about, that they symbolize. Um, but I love the idea that a bunch of people like a disheveled, crumpled, and I say this as someone with uh, who comes from a long line of men like that in my family, but a kind <laughs> of a New yorker -y, you know, a Brooklynite, um, uh, disheveled, uh, yeah, you know, like uh, absent-minded professor type of uh, look. I like that look personally, but I wouldn't support him if he didn't have good policies. <laughs> there you I go. I just make say he reminds me of my dad, but yeah. Um, at the same time, uh, the the war machine propaganda has uh, started back up uh, with the potential war with Iran. President, of course, ordering assassination of Soleimani, massive escalation. And uh, some of our old favorites are coming out uh, who helped cheerlead the Iraq war to offer their hot takes on what this means, in particular Ari Fleischer. Uh, is reprising the whole "world we'll be greeted as liberator" idea. Let's take a listen to what he had to say about the strike on Soleimani. 
You know, the Iranian people have been leading a revolution, a rebellion against their government, knowing what a dictatorship it is. It is one of the youngest, most pro-Western uh, people throughout the Middle East, the Persian community in Iran. And I am very curious to see if they're going to celebrate this as well. Because, and you know, many of those protests have said, end the Iranian aggression in other nations. Stop spending our Iranian money on these wars abroad, supporting, other, supporting terrorists. So I think it is entirely possible that this is going to be a catalyst inside Iran, where the people celebrate this killing of Soleimani and puts pressure on the Iranian government to stop its terrorism, to stop supporting all the various terrorist movements it has around the world. Yeah, and uh, hours after that, Katie, there are mass protests in the hometown of Soleimani, and I think in downtown Tehran. A number of the experts that we've talked to already on the show say that this will be an opportunity for the hardliners in Iran to consolidate and uh, maintain their position. So, you know, wow. so, exactly same, the same prediction. The, uh... I can't believe that Ari Fleischer would have a dishonest and or um, incorrect take on uh, Middle right. Eastern responses to U.S. foreign policy uh, actions. Where would we have seen that before? I just want to also give a shout out to Ari Fleischer. I really admire him for not like living underground. I, if the media did its job, he'd be afraid to show his face, honestly. <laughs> Because this is a guy who not only lied to get us into Iraq um, during the Bush administration, which he, in which he served, this is a guy who said in 2009, on hardball, of course, Chris Matthews didn't notice, which yeah. is interesting, but on hardball, he said he defended the Iraq war because we could not take the chance that Saddam Hussein might strike again. Yeah. This is a guy who in 2009 right. was claiming that Iraq, that the WMDs, were there or that um, somehow Iraq was related to 9-11. This is something Bush himself had already said wasn't true. It's mind-boggling that he, I mean, this is a great example of such a media fail. The fact that this guy would say that, the fact that he has any credibility. Um, and yeah, of course, he has no idea what he's talking about. And he's, and this is a guy, look, whatever you think of this, of, um, of, uh, of Soleimani, he is someone who really did uh, crack down on ISIS. So the idea that this is going to help you know, stop terrorism. Well, I think Look, the whole, no the whole thing is just ridiculous. I mean, we're yeah. not safe. Like, the whole idea that this is made us safer, no. Uh, we've had a, everybody no. in Iraq has had to evacuate. It was an American right. citizen. That's not making us safer. Katie, what do you think, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hardened to see, of course, the media has learned all their lessons from Iraq, and they're not, uh, not just buying into the administration rhetoric right. this time around, right? Yeah, that's so great. I mean, these people, uh, what do they say, though, to... Uh, I almost feel like the, the, they think that you take the lessons of history and you invert them, and that's how you're supposed to live live <laughs> life and apply history and apply le the lessons of the past. Because it's almost exactly the opposite of what it should be. Yeah, um, I mean, it's just it's crazy to see Ari Fleischer, a guy who has never had a full accounting of what happened in Iraq. And I've seen him defend it still, uh, some of his conduct yeah. from the war. And I, I think anybody who is going to bring him on to, uh, to comment on Iran should immediately ask him, about his credibility on this issue. Absolutely. Yeah, not only lying about the war at the time, but how he managed to, in 2009, yeah. think that uh, uh, Sama, uh, that Saddam had anything to do with 9-11. Yeah, yeah. Right. indeed. Katie, happy new year. Always great to see Thanks, you. Thanks, Katie. Thank you. You too. Bye. All right, we'll have more Rising for you right after this.